Hello everyone, FunshineX here. Welcome back to Keep Coding and No One Explodes, my remake of Keep Talking and No One Explodes in um, Minecraft with Computercraft. Last time we created the, uh, the button module, well we created most of it, and uh, I said that this time we were going to tie the two together so they can talk to each other. Because part of the button module's logic is based off the, uh, the timer on what time it currently is. So we need to have the two talk together and that means we need to use some wire uh, wireless modems. Let's go ahead and get that started. So we're gonna come back here and uh, go ahead and stick a wireless modem on here. Just go ahead and hold shift, well shift and space since we're flying to apply it there. And that's our wireless modem. Notice that we put it on the top, we'll need to remember that. And let's go ahead and go into the program. Control T to stop it from running. All right, so if we look at this, I've added a few things. The config settings are identical except for I've tracking the number of modules. Right now we're gonna hard code that. Eventually we'll have like a difficulty level which will determine the number of modules. Um, all this is the same except for I now call this modem LAN. It's the, the wired modem as opposed to wireless. Uh, and then I've got, I put everything into functions. So my init modems, uh, function now does all handles all taking care of wrapping all the peripherals my init screens basically resets the screens back to blank and sets up their defaults that kind of stuff i have a display time which does all of the computation on the diffuse time to get the minutes seconds and actually draw them on using the segment api that we created and then i have the main function which calls initialization of the modems initializes on the screens and does our loop on the diffuse time every time it ticks down we display the time sleep for one second and then we um, decrement the, the diffuse time and then we call main so that's kind of the updates i've made in between let's go ahead and add things to support modems so the first thing we're doing is go up to the very top and let's have a local variable called modem wi-fi and that's just the side it's on remember we put that on the top so we'll put that there and now in our in initialization of our modems, let's have something called Wi-Fi, and that's gonna be peripheral.wrap modem Wi-Fi. Make sure I spell everything right, there we go. And then um, what we need to do is we need to figure out what we need to send and what we need to receive. Well, I think one of the important things to send out to all the other um, modules is we might have like a startup, but we'll worry about that later, you know, to kind of tell, um, you know, module X, you're going to display the button module, so run that program, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll wait for that right now, and we'll just hard code which, which modules run which modules. <laughs> that makes sense. But we also need to send out the time. We're displaying it, but we need all the modules to be aware of what time it is. So let's start with that. I'm going to create a function called broadcast time. And that's gonna take no parameters. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna take our Wi-Fi modem and open channel. Um, you know, we actually don't need to put that in broadcast time. All we need to do is say Wi-Fi.transmit and then we'll have the things we need to do. We wanna have the channel we're broadcasting on. So I'll call that the broadcast channel. Uh, the channel that we're listening on so I'll call that the receive channel. And then the actual message we want to send, and right now that's this, the diffuse time. I'm not sure if I want to send the actual like minutes and seconds or just send the diffuse time and decode it using the very, you know, kind of the same code I used up here where we do the mod 60 and then divide and that kind of stuff. So anyway, so that's the message we want to send for this broadcast time function. And so we can put that down in here. After we display the time, we'll broadcast the time. Uh, but if we try and do that right now, it's gonna give us an error because we don't have the wife, the modem is not open. So in the init modems, let's go ahead and open that modem right here. So we'll do wifi.open. And which channel are, do we wanna open? We wanna open on the receive channel. And I guess technically, I guess, uh, I guess I didn't need to do this because I'm not receiving anything yet. 
but I will be soon, so that's fine. We'll put it in now. Um, and then that means I need to declare these actual channels. So let, right up here, let's do a, a variable for the broadcast channel and the receive channel. And let's broadcast on 111 and let's receive on 222. <laughs> okay, so those are the channels we will use. You can go up to 65,535 uh, from, from one to that number, um, and these are good numbers. Um, you want to avoid using any number that you have, any number that's also an ID of a computer, um, because when you open on the RedNet channel, it automatically opens the ID of the computer, so computer 4 opens RedNet channel 4. And then if you try and broadcast on four, you might be sending messages you don't intend to, that kind of stuff. So that should be good. Now we're broadcasting the time every second. And that's that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and save that and run it. And we shouldn't get any errors. And we should see our modem turn red because that means it's open and listening. And we should, yep, everything is over here is working great. Now I have a modem over here on this computer we're going to use to test with. So let's open this and remember the the main computer was sending on channel 111 so I've opened that and then all we need to do is say uh, event um, is equal to and this is something new I didn't know before but if we want to take uh, os.pull event um, remember that returns multiple parameters now there's a thing in Lua where you can take multiple parameters and wrap them as a table by just putting curly braces around it. So I think that's right. Let me make sure I type that right because this is new to me. Um, yep, wrapping braces. All right, and then we can say, uh, let's just do this in a loop forever. So while true do, uh, and, and then we'll go ahead and just print event. And I think number five is the message on that table. The first one would be the actual event, the second one would be the side of the modem that it came in on, the third is the um, channel that it came in, the fourth is the channel it wants you to broadcast back on, and five is the message, and six is the distance that it traveled. So we can hit run on this and we should get the timer displayed every second. So we're now receiving the messages that that guy is sending. Perfect. And then again, this is not going to be exactly accurate to one second intervals, but that's fine. The game just needs to count down. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is that will send out the, the time to that um, to all of our modules, so we could just listen to channel 111 and we'll know the time. So we'll use that in a sec, but I also need to know if this uh, module is diffused or it failed, I need to send a message back to the game control computer to update, you know, to add strikes or or what kind of, or whatnot, or know that the game is over because everything has been diffused. So let's write something here. Um, I know this works, so I can take this out. And let's do um, while true do. We're going to say wifi.transmit and we're going to go the other way now. So this is on channel 111. I don't care the received channel and the message is, uh, let's say diffused. Let's do it in all caps so it's easy to receive on the other side. I'm going to sleep for a second and then wifi.transmit, same channel a message called fail. Something like that. We might make different keywords later, but that's what I want to use now. And then we'll sleep again for one second. So that's going to come constantly send out these messages every second, alternating between diffused and fail. So we can go ahead and run that program. Okay, so now let's go back up to this guy. All right, and we will put it in here stop the timer now this is going to be a little bit tricky because right now we have a sleep for a second 
Now, if we're sleeping for a second, what that does is it starts a um, an internal timer and then calls OS pull event until that timer is done. And while it's doing that, it ignores every other event that comes in, and it knows mouse keys, keyboard controls, um, RedNet input or Redstone input, and modem input. So if we sleep, we can't get those modem messages back. So that's bad. So we're gonna take that out. <laughs> but we still have to only run this code every every second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a function uh, that's gonna call check for input. All right, check for input. And we're gonna pass how long we wanna check, like a timeout, right? And so I'm gonna say check for input for one second. Now we're gonna make that function up here. And we'll say check for input and then timeout. Okay. That's good, and then I'll uh, end that function just so we don't forget. In here, we're gonna say, well, first we wanna start our own timer. We're gonna kinda simulate what the sleep does, but we're gonna make sure that we also check for modem messages while it's sleeping. So we're gonna say local timeout timer is equal to os.starttimer, and the length is timeout. So that's gonna start a timer that will end in one second, okay? Or in whatever we pass, we passed it one second. All right, and then the next thing we wanna do is do um, a loop. So while true, do. And then end that loop here. Inside of that loop, we will pull messages. So uh, event, let's uh, local. We'll make this local because remember we have multiple events. Uh, we'll just call it EVT, just to, just in case. Um, is equal to the table form of os.pull event. Okay, and we're pulling all events, not just modem messages, because we want to get the timer message as well. And then here we need to check what kind of message we got. So if um, EVT the first uh, column in, in the table, which is the name of the message. If that's equal to modem message, that means we got uh, a message back from one of our modules and we're gonna do something. <laughs> and right now, how about we just say print EVT of five, which is the message that came back. So it'll be diffused, fail, diffused, fail, right? Uh, else if the event is equal to, I think it's just called timer, and event, uh, the timer message passes you the name of the timer. So that adds in the second one is equal to, what did we call it? Time out timer. I guess it passes the object. Then uh, we want to break out of this loop because that means we've been waiting for one second. And we can end here. And there and there. Let's make sure everything's ended. Good. All right. That should work. Let's go ahead and save that and run it. And we should get... Nope, we got an error. <laughs> 78. Uh, where did I forget an end? Oh, I didn't. I forgot an extra equal sign. Try that again. Okay, is it still sending messages? Maybe? Did we open the right channel? <laughs> oh, are we broadcasting? I think we're broadcasting on the wrong channel. Whoops, we don't want to broadcast on 11, 111. That's what we're sending on. We want to broadcast on 222. There we go. Now, if we go check the monitor, we should be getting those messages. There we go, diffuse, fail, diffuse, fail. So now we have a mechanic where we can send out the current time to all the modules and they can listen and receive it if they need to. And the, all the modules can send messages back to the computer whether it was a diffused or a failure. Now what we'll probably end up doing, not right now, but um, inside that where I said do something, if I get a diffused message, then I'll subtract one from the module count 
which we kept up here. And if this num modules is equal to zero, then we know that we've diffused all the modules and we'll display a, a winning sound or message or something, right? However, if we receive a fail, then we will add one to num strikes and make sure we display that on this computer monitor. And if that num strikes is equal to our max strikes, then we'll trigger our TNT and cause the entire thing to explode. Sound good? I think it sounds great. All right, so that stopped at 410. Did I, did I stop it? Okay, I did stop. I was like, why did that stop? Let's go ahead now and do our logic for our um, button module. All right, so let's put it in the, the logic that handles if they diffuse this module or not. If you remember at the end of the last episode, we had this check where we said, um, after they clicked on it twice, we'll check the game logic and either send a diffuse message or send a fail message. I added a few more things. Um, I added a variable for the press time. That is the time that they press the button the first time. And that's going to equal whatever the diffuse time that has been broadcast to us. So that just remembers. And, uh, and then we get the input. So let's check the wait for input because I've updated that. Uh, let's see. Wait for input. Where are you? Where are you? There you go. <laughs> so in the wait for input, remember, we want to... We're going to display a color and a word to the screen. Then we're going to wait for a, mod or a monitor touch event to happen. Then we're going to change the color and then wait for another monitor event to happen. But in between all of that, we need to listen for the modem messages that are telling us the time. So that's why I have this loop that's going to while go forever. Pull the event into a, a table array called EVT. If the um, event name is monitor touch, then we'll break out of this loop because we've got that first click or the second click. And then otherwise, if the uh, event is called modem message, then we store whatever came across in the message as the diffuse time. Now we might have to get a few more details than that because what if somebody else sends a modem message on this channel <laughs> and screws with our diffuse time? Yeah, we might have to add some more checks on that, but this will work for now. We save that diffuse time and then when they click on it the first time, we copy the diffuse time into the pressed time, okay? I've also um, created the modem. So here it is, Wi-Fi side is the top. I wrap it, open it on channel 111. That's what the broadcast channel is for this game. Okay, now let's do the, um, the logic. So very simple logic here to do first is we're gonna say if the press time is equal to the diffuse time. So that means they clicked it and then clicked it again immediately, really fast will return a true. Otherwise, we'll return a false. So that's what we're gonna go with for now. So let's go ahead and run that. And I've also set that um, if it returns a true, it's gonna send a message and it's gonna be displayed right here. So we should see if we take too long, so we click it once and then we click it again, we get a fail, all right? Because we didn't click it fast enough. Let's boot it up again. And this time we'll click it quickly. Bam, bam, and oh, we gotta fail again. I think we gotta click it really fast. <laughs> so, bam, bam. That did not work either. Okay, well, we're having problems. But the, I think what's happening is our diffuse time is not um, being set again. So it's probably like, it might decrement right as we get it. Yeah, that's probably what's happening. So what, what we'll do instead is we'll subtract it. The press time minus the diffuse time. And we'll give them a one second lay, layaway. So that's, uh, if check game logic, if the press time minus diffuse time is less than or equal to one. So if it's within one second, then we should be okay. Let's see if that works any better. There we go, diffused. Okay, cool. So if you click it within one second, you get a success message. Let's try that one more time just to make sure. Um, let's 
Let's, well, we're going to do an error by doing a really long time. Yep, fail. And then if we click it quickly, we get diffused. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we actually need to put the real game logic in, and that's available on um, the bombmanual.com, which is the website for this game. I'm not going to go through it all. If you want to actually know the logic to the game, you need to do play the game, buy the game, whatever, that kind of stuff. But I'll go through a little bit real quick. Have this commented out. We'll go ahead and take out this logic that we just put in. That was the test logic. Get rid of all this. And we're going to say, if the color of the button is blue and the word on the button is abort, then we do something. Well, we check to see if the button is held for the right amount of time. I'll show you what that means later. <laughs> There's another one that if, if that's not true, but there are more than one battery and the word on the button is detonate, then we're gonna check immediate. And I'll show you what that means in a minute as well. And there's other checks, basing on the color, the number of indicators, if the indicators are accurate, so like, or on, so indicators FRK, FRK equals equals one, then we do something different, uh, different colors of the button, all right? So we're either checking if the button is held for the correct amount of time, or checking if it's released immediately. And remember, we can't really do that because we can't push it in and then release it, so we're just doing the first click is turning it on, the second click is turning it off. Checking immediate, that's that same check we do. We want to say if when they clicked it on and when they clicked it off is within one second, then we're good. Or true. However, oops, get rid of this comment. Don't need it anymore. Uh, on the check held, there's more logic in the manual that says based on the color that it changes to, the game button on color, um, if it's blue, white, yellow, or something else, we have to see what digit is on the clock either four one or five and to do that <laughs> i call check time and i pass a digit i calculate the diffuse time the minute seconds and that kind of stuff we've done that before and i say if the minutes is that digit or the 10 seconds is that digit or this the one seconds is that digit then we turn true all of that works to simulate the game logic that is or to, to implement the game logic that's in the game so now we'll do, I need to restart this guy because he's already exploded. Oops. All right, so let's see what it gives us. Right now it's giving us a blue detonate. So let's go through the logic. If the button is blue and it says abort, no, that's not the case. If there's more than one battery, no, we have no batteries. If there's indicator, no indicators. Buttons yellow, red. All right, if none of the above apply, then return, refer to releasing a held button. All right, so we go ahead and click it once. It is now green, which is uh, the timer has to have a one. So we need to click it when there's a one in the timer. So three, two, one, click. Diffused. It worked. Woohoo. Okay, let's, let's give it another try. Okay, reset that one, reset that one. What do we got this time? We have a white button says abort. Button is blue, no, no batteries, no indicators. Yellow, all right, we have, have we got a held button again, so I click it once. Green, we just have to have one again there. Oh, we just missed the one, dang it. <laughs> let's, let's do it again just so we get something other than that case. So, control T. Run it again. Hopefully we get a different color or something. All right, a yellow button. Okay, so we just have to hold it again. So it turned white. A white, we have to have a one in any position, which we do right now. So bam, diffused. Oh, sweet. <gasps> cool. And then run it one more time. The only reason I reset that one is so that the message clears. All right, a blue button that says hold. That's just again, we need to press it and now it's green, so we need to have a one. Ah, I missed the one again. Five, four, three, two, one, click. 
diffused. All right, I think it's working, guys. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. All right, guys, so one last thing before we go. I've got a user in the, uh, the, one of the comments that said, I can execute world edit commands from a command block, which means I can execute them from a command computer, or so we think. So let's put the uh, um, position one here, position two here, and we'll go into our program that I've been using to set the time. And we'll just do an exec and do slash shas fill uh, with air and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, that didn't work. If I let's just test it really quick. Uh, set air. Oh yeah, it's set, not fill. Uh, so set. Nope, not quite. Hmm. So that worked. If I do a command block here, or, why don't I have command blocks? Why don't I have command blocks? It's possible that I have the, the computer, or the server options set to not allow command blocks, and maybe that's why this is not working. But we, we did time set zero was fine. Hmm, let's see if it generated an error. Let me fill this in. No error and it's not clearing it. So. Something might be off. Let me um, check into it a little bit more, but we definitely have a possibility that we can randomize the game, which will be really cool. And I'll, I'll look into it. Maybe I just have command blocks turned off. So if you guys like this episode, let me know. If you're having fun and enjoying it, make sure you put something in the comments. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will hope to see you guys in the next episode of Keep Coding and Nobody Explodes. Catch you later, later guys. Bye.